Welcome back students. Here we are ready to make some dandelion art. Um, I know that some people don't like dandelions and honestly I don't like them in my garden but sometimes when they're blooming out in my yard and it's all yellow I'm just totally into it. And um, really where we live there's a lot of dandelions so um, I'm going to teach you how to make this because this is one of our first kind of blossoming things that come up in the year and I think it's kind of exciting when I get to see um, get to see that beautiful yellow color come out so what we're going to do is create a background first because usually when you create art um, artwork you start with the background first and then you build forward so we're going to end with the dandelions on the very top I have chalk here to do that and what I want you to do with the chalk is rub it on its side very, very lightly and create a scene that's maybe feels like grass, like a grassy area sort of. And then create a scene on top that feels more like sky area. So I am I am trying to rub in a circle and I don't want to rub super, super hard and blotchy. I'm just trying to rub sort of lightly on here to give a good overall soft feeling. And you can use, again, any materials that you have at home. I'm just showing you what we're using in class because it works so much better um, for us here. And now I'm actually grabbing a tissue over here. And instead of using my hands, I'm going to take all this chalk dust that I've spread everywhere and I'm going to rub it in with a tissue or a paper towel and it makes it look really soft and beautiful. In a moment, I'm gonna see some areas where I missed, but I don't mind, I can go back and add more. And as I'm working, I can see all this chalky parts, uh, all the chalk dust that was just sitting on top of the paper is now getting ground in. So it's really making a big difference on there. Now my sky doesn't look like it's so blotchy anymore. It looks really nice and smooth, just like a sky. I'm gonna grind in down over here, kind of grind that in. And you know what, I just need more green because you can't have your edges of the paper looking green. When I look outside, I don't see white grass, I mean green grass and then just this white space. I see green grass everywhere, so I wanna get that done. And isn't it shocking how quickly you can fill up a piece of paper with chalk? Boom, it happens just like that. You could also do that with the side of a crayon. It's just going to give a different texture, but that's fine. I mean, there's lots of different ways of making skies and grass, so that's a great way to work. You do want to use a dry material, though, like marker would be really hard to do this with because of our next step. So like crayon or chalk or maybe the side of a color pencil would work okay. So now what I'm going to do is grow my um, really tall dandelions. I'd like you to try for three on your paper, and I know dandelions grow in all different sizes. They don't all come up all the same height, just like, you know, humans don't come up all the, like the same height, so neither do dandelions. So I'm gonna go like this and make my dandelion stem. Dandelion stems are pretty smooth, but they do have sort of like a textured line that grows straight up and down, and I wanna get this overlapping. See how it wasn't floating on my grass? It's actually touching the bottom there. I'll have another one that maybe goes this way, so this is my shorter one getting some smooth paint. Have to dip a lot to get that paint on there for sure. And then the last one I'm going to do, I think it'll be a medium size and I'll have it stop about right here. I want this one to be taller, I decided. There we go, and this one medium. So I'm just working on some gentle brush strokes, not getting globs of paint everywhere. Feeling good, oh, I love the way that painting feels so relaxing. I want to fill up my page a little bit more, so I just decided to grow all these a little bit longer. Ooh, that feels nicer. I kind of like that they're like I'm sort of in the grass looking at the dandelion really up close, so they're fe feeling really tall to me. The next thing I'm next tool I'm going to grab here is kind of surprising, but I'm going to grab this. No, I'll grab this next. Let's start, let's build on this. I'm going to let my stems dry a little bit. Yes, this is a pipe cleaner. It's a pipe cleaner that's bent on its side. Man, Mrs. Samuel can use pipe cleaners for all different kinds of things. Sculptures or stamping. And I love the way this pulls out a really nice texturized leaves. And dandelions really do have some texturized leaves. And do those leaves come out? They have so many. Now in class, we don't have a lot of time to be making a ton of leaves on our dandelions like you might have an opportunity to. So you go through here 
and you keep on making those leaves. Look at how cool and texturized that look. That would be totally impossible to do with a paintbrush. But while we're stamping with this, it looks so great. And I would just keep on going more. But again, I'm in the middle of a demonstration, so I don't want to keep on going. I want you to do the activity, so I need to stop, even though it's so tempting. I'm pressing very lightly, by the way. I'm getting not a ton of globby paint, and I'm pressing lightly to really get that really cool texture that comes out. Now that my dandelions up here are dry enough, um, I still would add some more leaves and let them dry out more, but I'll show you the final step. So you know how dandelions are yellow to begin with? So I'd grab my yellow dandelion like this, and I'll make it be, I'll, I'll make it be my, my little one over here. I'm going to take my piece of cardboard, which I love stamping with cardboard. I'm going to tap, tap, tap this off, and I'm going to make this be a dandelion. And when I think of dandelions, I feel like they're sort of like shorter on top, and they have these longer bottoms to them. Tap, tap, tap. So right now, what I'm doing is stamping again. I'm not sliding. I slid my brush to make those smooth textures. I stamped up and down to make these. Stamping doesn't look like this back and forth. That's cheating. You don't want to do that. Plus, you don't get that awesome texture anymore. So the same thing with this cardboard. I want to create that cool S-like. I want to see that cool S-like texture in here. So I really do want to stamp. I don't want to slide this out. And I like how it looks like the little tiny dandelion petals. If you ever look at them, there's so many tiny dandelion petals on there so you can keep on stamping that. Then I'm going to flip my cardboard to the other side and when dandelions go to seed, the top of them, I'll bet you know, looks like a huge puff. So I'm just designing my huge puff up here and I can continue going and going and going and making more of a huge puff. And you really want to take your time and get into that stamping process. It's very rhythmic. It's almost like music in some ways, but it's like visual music. Up and down. Keep on going more and more. Don't go so much that you lose your texture. Let it dry. Keep on working around. Now, I honestly don't feel like that's done. I really want to add some more texture, but the sake of demonstration is to show you how to and then let you explore on your own. Um, another thing that some of my kindergartners have taught me is they did this, and I asked them, what is that? And they said, it's the dandelion tufts after I make a wish. Isn't that cool? You can do this any way you want, and obviously, I hope you finish so they can all feel like full dandelions on your page. Thanks for joining, friends. You can go ahead and uh, do this activity at home and send me a photo, and I would love to see it. Thanks, all my students. Bye.